certainly not least, my friend and colleague, the gentleman from New Jersey, is recognized. Hi. You guys got to be tired. Um, I know after a while, you, can, you know, almost have your eyes glaze over. I want to tell you, and I really mean this, and, and I, there's a lot of people in this room who mean it. We appreciate you. We appreciate your bravery, your strength, your love for the ones that you lost. We appreciate the professionals who are here who are willing to speak up against all odds. This is a big deal. And without folks like you, without good Americans like you, without individuals who have the courage and strength to stand up the way that you do, we're definitely doomed. And I also want to promise you something else, and I think the chairman will, 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 would stick with me on this, and I think the members here would stick with it. We're going to do something. We absolutely didn't do this for an exercise. We absolutely didn't do this for politics. So I, I do want to say this to, to my friends on the other side. You know, um, they threw out all kinds of stuff today, numbers that weren't real, a whole discussion of guns. You can have a lot of discussions on guns, but that wasn't what today was about. It wasn't a discussion about the guns. It was discussion about Alvin Bragg. They talked about George Santos, anti-Semitism, Donald Trump, money going from the NRA to members, which, by the way, I don't think it does, or else I'm surely the only one not getting it. But I asked a few people. I don't think that's accurate either. That's an old political trick. Just so that you all who are sitting here at this table know, you put the shiny object up here. The shiny object is Donald Trump. So hopefully you, you hope that you all and that we all get so focused on his issues and get drawn into that. I don't give a damn about his issues right now. We'll deal with his issues and their important issues at another time. I care about your issues. We care about your issues. They should care about your issues, not all this other crap they threw out there. And I'm sorry, I'm a little rough around the edges sometimes, but I'm just telling you the truth. It's about time we hear the truth, and that's what the truth is. And the truth is this. I did write some things down, too, that crime rates in our biggest cities have risen to staggering levels. You know, when you say the crime rate or what's really going on, you can't just talk about somebody who is actually been prosecuted, was going to be prosecuted, but was released. That's why these numbers look down, because we're releasing everybody. We're not putting them in jail. Bad people should go in jail. That's where they belong. They shouldn't be out so they can hurt your wives, your children, your mothers, your fathers, your grandfathers. We want to be safe. And it doesn't matter if we're, you know, what color, what race, what origin we are. We want to be safe in our homes. You know, I think of what goes on in Chicago. It's not only New York. My God, how many little black babies get shot every single week in that town? And we can stop it. We can stop it if we had good prosecutors. And who's funding these progressive district attorneys? We should know that. Well, it's George Soros. With this increase in crime, you would think their DA would be actively trying to slow it down. He's not. He's taking money from George Soros. No, I don't know any but money from the NRA, but I'll tell you, there's tons of money, tens of millions. In fact, he spent $170 million. That's a lot of dough. $170 million in 2022 and $40 million, which was for local prosecutor elections. We never had money spent like that on prosecutor elections, and it's wrong. Prosecutors should run because they want to defend the law, help their police, and most of all, help you. God bless you after being a victim and losing people you love that you're here. I can't believe how strong you are. And the beg the, you know what begs a question, too? Who's worse? Is it a prosecutor who doesn't enforce the law or the criminal? Well, you know, the prosecutor who doesn't enforce the law has a broad effect across mm -hmm. the whole city and Good should point. know better and is taking his position that position of such importance to be the legal guardian, to be the person that's the caretaker of our America, of our cities, of this great city of New York. And what does he do? For politics, he doesn't care. The fact that he didn't sit down and shed some tears with you, it's unbelievable to me. The fact that he put you and accused you of murder. Troy was right before. A man tries to kill you, You've got to stop them. It's your right. 
but I guess he would have rather that you got killed. I don't understand it. And it's in New York City, it's in Chicago, it's in San Francisco, and this is the facts. Oh, shoot. I got, I got a few more seconds. A few more. Um, the, the bottom line is the facts are that all the Soros back district attorneys are doing this everywhere. It leads to more crime. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to finish up. Gentlemen. And I think the answer is I think he should resign. I swear to God he should resign and he should be disbarred. Gentlemen's, uh, gentlemen's time.